Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a book cake. Specifically, I'm going to show you how I made an Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Other Stories book cake. And this book cake isn't just going to be laying flat on a cake board. Oh no, that would be too easy. Instead, I have it resting upright, which I think really showcases the book. Okay. Before we get started, shout out to my newest patron, Beau Broussard. Thank you so much for joining. And one more thing, before we get started, if you like this video, can you do me a favor and like it below? It really helps us out. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel now, because we put out new cake videos every Monday. Let's get started. Here I have the book that I'm going to replicate. You can see that it's pretty thick and it has illustrations all over it. The front, the side, the back, lots of hand painting for this one. I am very excited. I cut out a stencil slightly smaller than the actual size of the top of the book. It's smaller because the cake will be covered in modeling chocolate, which is going to bulk it up a bit. And we'll talk more about that later. But next, I place the stencil right onto the cake and make sure that my knife is lined up, and then I cut the sheet in half. I place the stencil back on the cake, and I cut evenly across, leaving two book-sized layers of cake. And I just repeat this until I get as many layers out of this cake as I can. A big, giant, serrated bread knife is perfect for this. But a small one would work too. Now that my cake layers are all cut to size, it's time to stack the cake. This cake is layers of red velvet with cream cheese buttercream between each layer. I chose red velvet because there's red on the cover of the book, so once they cut the cake, it's going to look beautiful. Also, our red velvet cake is delicious. You can see that each layer of cake goes through a wooden dowel that is attached to the cake board. This wooden dowel helps support the cake and it keeps the layers from slipping and sliding while I'm working on it. It basically keeps the entire cake from tipping over. The height is pretty close to the real book but it is slightly too tall, so I very carefully trim that top layer down. And guess what? That means I get to eat the cake scraps. Woohoo! <laughs> Next, I place the cake in the fridge to chill for about 20 minutes, then I take it back out to carve. I wanna carve this cake while it's chilled because when the cake is cold, the buttercream firms up and the cake is much more sturdy. Carving the cake while it's at room temperature is super difficult, especially a cake that's as tall and thin as this one. Here I plop some buttercream on the top of the chilled cake and I work it down the sides to crumb coat the cake. I use an offset spatula and a smoother to make this cake look as much like the real book as I can. The entire cake is covered in buttercream, so again, I place it in the fridge to chill because the next step is to cover the cake in modeling chocolate. I start by adding the gray areas to represent the silver edge of all the pages. Then I smooth the chocolate and I trim away the excess chocolate with a blade. You want to trim the chocolate as close to the cake as possible without tearing it up with that blade. To represent the pages of the book, I take a very small, sharp pointed tool and I sculpt vertical lines. A lot of vertical lines. <laughs> it's a pretty simple technique, but it is very time consuming. Then I paint the edges of the pages silver, which looks really neat on the real book and on the cake book. The pages are sculpted, so next comes the final layer, which is blue modeling chocolate. 
I place it right up against the cake, and again, I'm trimming away the chocolate, leaving just a small amount hanging over the edge so that it looks like the book cover. I pressed a thin wooden dowel against the cake to make a mark, and I used that mark as a guide to help me sculpt the edge. With sculpting tools, I press deeper and deeper to create an indentation in the book. The book cake, that is. There's also a little bit of sculpting on the spine of the book, where each of the three raised bands are. Now it's time to paint. I started by painting the title of the book, which is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and other stories. And that is in the center of the cover. Then I painted all the different designs and characters, working my way from the top to the bottom. When painting with food color, it's best to paint the lighter color areas first and then go in and add the darker colors so that the light doesn't mix with the dark. So I started by painting the silver areas in with the basic shapes of the characters and then I outlined the characters in a very, very dark blue, just like the cover of the book. The Cheshire Cat is sitting in a tree with a bunch of silver leaves at the top of the book. And then as I work my way down, the sides of the cake have playing cards, there's a teapot. And then Alice in this falling position in the center. And then below Alice is a scene with the Red Queen. And there's rose bushes and the rabbit. It is a super fun cover. There's so much going on and it was so fun to paint. Once the front cover was painted, I moved on to the illustrations that continue around the spine of the book and the back. Something that's really interesting about this book is that readers have an array of different takes on the meaning behind the story and the characters. Some people claim that Alice has a mental illness. Some say Lewis Carroll wrote the story while on hallucinogens. I have no idea if any of this is true, but what I do know is this book is deep and it is super funny. There is a specific scene that I really like. So this is a quote from the book. This is starting with Alice. <laughs> really? Now you ask me, said Alice, very much confused. I don't think... Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. <laughs> that is too funny. And there you have it, an Alice in Wonderland book cake. If you guys like this video, like this video below right now because that really helps us out. And if you haven't subscribed, now is the time we put out new cake videos every single Monday. Specifically, I'm going to show you how I made an Allison. Uh, her name's Alice, not Allison. Specifically, I'm going to show you how I made an Alice's Adventures. <laughs> Shoot! Alice's. I keep 